Hi everyone, Tim the Plane Man here and welcome to Plane Time Flight Controller Edition. What I have here is something really exciting. From following what, what's been going on with Artie Pilot, I noticed there's a new flight controller that's just been added to the code base. And I looked it up online and it's very, very, very interesting. A very powerful flight controller and not too expensive. Flight controllers have been getting really expensive lately and this one, I would call it a bargain for what you get. So let's uh, open the box, take a look and see what's inside. Okay, let's start with, and as you can see, I haven't even opened the, the, the outside packaging. Oh, two boxes, interesting. Okay. So, here we have the two boxes. Let's take a look inside. I'll just put that out of the way. I hopefully won't need the knife again. It's like Christmas morning. Let's see what we've got. So, okay. Just slides open like that. Oh, I do need the knife. Well, that's nicely packaged. What have we got in this one? Here we have, well, let's start with this one because I've got a feeling this one is the, the real pack. Okay, so this is the good, also good stuff. Um, this is, uh, let's see, what we have here, and, and I, I thought this was what it was, and this is very, very interesting. This is an airspeed sensor. It's not just an airspeed sensor. It's a digital airspeed sensor. It's not just a digital airspeed sensor. This is a CAN airspeed sensor. So it's using the CAN protocol to communicate to the flight controller. So it won't use a UART. And it also doesn't use U I squared C. And to me, that seems like eminently sensible. I have, well, I won't talk a lot about it now. I'm, prob I'm pl probably planning to do a bit of a rant uh, video about this, but for me, I think can I squared C as a bus based protocol and absolutely uh, drone can is the new name for uh, the can protocol uh, it uh, it just makes so much sense to me that peripherals should be uh, using a can bus to communicate with all the flight controllers should be using can bus to talk to peripherals if possible so I bought a can based airspeed sensor because I could find one of those and Shell Tech sold it to me along with the flight controller. This, I'm not 100% sure, it looks a lot like a, um, a GPS or compass. The kit that I bought supposedly comes with a GPS and compass. Uh, it should have been built in so or included, so I'm thinking maybe that extra piece is what that is. So, let's see about the, the fun part. This, it's a bit like Prince's Black Album, really. It's just a black box, nicely packaged, not a marking on it, no brand, no logo, no nothing. Just a simple, no-nonsense black box. All right, let's see what we've got inside this box. Slide the top open. And here we go. All right, so look at that. I'm not sure which way up you want that to be, but this is definitely what I've been waiting for. This is a Choltec. It's a Chiotec. It's a Chiotec Zealot H743 flight controller. And here it is. There's even a printed user manual. And I think uh, I have everything here. Okay, so most importantly, what is included in the package? So we've got a, a Zealot H743 flight controller times one, a 14S power module, a Wi-Fi bridge, which is kind of interesting. Uh, one of the best things about the Pix Racer was it had a built-in Wi-Fi module, and this has a Wi-Fi module inclu included as well. Uh, an SD card they give you, you don't have to find your own SD card, a telemetry cable, a telemetry 
an S bus out ADC cable. So that's uh, um, one of the uh, one of the UARTs can be multiple multi used as an S bus out. There's a power cable. There's a comes with all the cables. I, I kind of love this, and if uh, and and the best part is, I mean, the cables. Well, I hope so. I mean, I'll I'll have a look. We'll see. Uh, again, my goal with these kinds of things is no soldering as far as possible. Let's see how far we get with that, but I, I'm hoping that I can get a long way without having to solder anything that comes with an awful lot of cables out of the box. Uh, there's a, an I squared C and CAN cable, and there's another I, there's an I squared C and CAN splitter. So the, the, there are multiple I squared C interfaces on this board. We'll have a look at it in a second. And if you use with the I squared C splitter or the CAN splitter, multiple CAN devices can be connected to the single CAN port. Um, a, a safety buzzer, pretty standard with flight controllers to to have a safety um, a safety switch for arming purposes. A cable, USB cable, an external USB connection board. Well, that's kind of interesting, and a double-sided phone. So. I will open the board and then we might come back to that. So we've got a USB cable. We've got, what's this? Ooh. Okay, here is the Wi Fi module with a, a the SSID, the default SSID, which I will of course be changing if I can figure out how to, um, printed on the side. And, and the board rate is 921600, which is honestly pretty impressive, especially considering the standard board rate of UARTs, uh, typically on flight controllers. So here we go again. We have a Mavlink Wi-Fi bridge. And now this is included with this flight controller. I think you can buy this separately from Chiotech and this is the new standard connectors that is used on the latest generation of the of flight controllers not for example on the old pixhawks but it has this um kind of clip-in uh, connector on my pix racer and on the durandal and this is the same at the same type so i would think that this could probably plug into a durandal or maybe into the pix racer or something similar and you can uh, very sim very easily get Wi-Fi to your flight controller for telemetry for setup. For example, bury the flight controller deep inside the, the um, a plane with a Wi-Fi module that, like this. You can do uh, connect with ground control or or a mission planner, set up the plane, and even because it's running reasonably fast at nine two one hundred. Uh, it's 920k, right? That's what that board rate is telling you. So 920k is is actually not too bad, right? And uh, Wi-Fi wise, of course, it depends on how fast your Wi-Fi goes, but you should be able to download uh, a log file in a few minutes. So let's see what else. I'm deliberately staying. I can see the flight controller. There it is right there. Let's open the other stuff first adds to the suspense, right? Or not, because some of you are just gonna forward, right, all the way through. And you know what, I will, I'll put the chapter links in the video, so if you really wanna just jump forward to where, when I um, open up the actual flight controller itself, go ahead, have fun. It's probably what I would do. And maybe come back and have a look at this stuff uh, afterwards. So here we have a power module with a capacitor, but not soldered on. So that's a bit annoying because I'm probably gonna have to solder that on, but that's okay. I, I've come to appreciate the value of having a capacitor on your power control power module uh, because of the working with the SNL Plus. I have two different SNL Pluses. One of them came with a capacitor and it was actually connected. And one of them did, didn't. I came with a capacitor and I had to solder it on and I just didn't solder it on and guess what happened? my video signal suffered badly from interference from the uh, from the 
basically the motor causing electronic interference in the uh, in the power signal which fed through to the flight controller and the video signal so having a capacitor which is basically on the input side of the power um, and I, I guess I'll just solder that on and there we have it's a pretty standard uh, power module power distribution module with XT60 connectors which is great and apparently rated for up to 14s so I will probably be using a 4s oh and there's a little bit of heat shrink that comes with so that uh, when soldering on the capacitor can shrink on the heat shrink so that uh, you know that doesn't bend off or, or pop out so that's pretty nice looks nice and solid and that's kind of important I noticed you know honestly with the um, that's really solid right how that's that connected onto the board there with the power distribution module that came with the Durand or the wires on a seem I don't know a little flimsy and I'm going to make sure that this is mounted solidly and I will you never know I might even put a switch but um, nice long wires also for connecting from the power distribution board to the flight controller which means uh, I can probably uh, mount it uh, a little further away from the flight controller which is also a good thing too again electronic interference close to the flight controller is going to interfere somewhat with the electronics of the flight controller mostly it would be with the built-in compass and I've seen that with when I originally mounted the Durandal in the uh, in the Aeroscout I didn't realize but I'd actually just replaced the Durandal and replaced the the spectrum receiver that had been in the Aeroscout turns out the spectrum receiver was immediately like there's a there's a piece of um, plywood and and the the ESC was right underneath the plywood and the the receiver was right above the plywood well, I took the receiver out and I put the flight controller on had no end of problems calibrating the compass could not get it to work until I figured out because I mean the axis is completely different you look at you open up the top of the wings you can't see the ESC you don't realize that it's right underneath it wasn't until I actually sliced open the edge of the plane and had a look and found that the flight control the ESC was right underneath the flight controller that I realized my problem and relocated the flight controller and it didn't have to be a long way um, it moved it so it was about three or four centimeters away from the ESC instead of right above it and uh, the problems with the compass went away so having the ability to put a power module like that this far away from the flight controller seems like a good thing to me I'm quite happy about that that's just nice we got more goodies so let's go with this here we have our can splitter board and this is a USB connector so there's two USB ports supposedly on the flight controller one is like a standard USB plug and the other one is a USB wire that uh, should enable this USB cable to be mounted hmm that'd be great somewhere else like outside the plane what a really what a nice idea so I have to figure out what cable that uses I wonder if it's the same one as the can splitter it seems like it's the same one I'll figure that out. It's just interesting that it didn't come with a with a cable inside that box. Okay, what else have we got? This is going to be fun. We've got oh, this is a safety buzzer. This is our safety buzzer and uh, a switch. I don't know. I don't know if I see a switch there. Um, maybe that's the button. There is a button. That might just be the button there. So this is our safety buzzer and safety switch all good here we have I think this is just a packet of, of cables which you know what I I really am interested to see what kind of cables I get because again back to my whole oh look at this this is just beautiful there's the mounting um, double-sided tape let's not lose that and there's a 32 oh, interesting a 32 gig micro SD card they promised a 16 gig micro SD card but I actually got a 32 gigs card so that's that's quite nice uh, nothing special about it I think but um, 
that. Nice that it includes one and nice that it's 32 gig and that should store a whole bunch of a whole bunch of data. So now we have the main event. This is the Shell Tech. As far as I know, Shell Tech is an abbreviation. Shell is not actually really the Chinese word, especially if you look at the Chinese characters. The word Chiao is short for Chiao, which is the dome of the sky. Chiao Tech Aerospace Technology. And here is my Zealot H743 flight controller. It's very, very small. It's smaller than the Durandal, I think, or it's, it's definitely slimmer and maybe a little thicker but it's very light, uh, but it also has an aluminum ca case, which is really, really interesting. And uh, I'll just quickly run through the specs. We've got UART 1, UART 2, on-screen display. This flight controller has a built-in OSD. You don't need a, 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 a separate OSD module. There's a, a, a camera in and camera out, basically on the same uh, plug and so camera input goes in here the all the Madeline connections to feed the OSD are all done inside there's a built-in uh, OSD chip and uh, I should be able to get OSD feed directly out to um, to my goggles or to a computer there's the USB port which is I think this is the USB port where that little USB uh, gadget should be able to connect on and give me uh, the ability to have a USB plug on the side of the plane somewhere instead of having to figure out how to get wires into and out of the plane. There is uh, I squared C here and a CAN bus port here which the splitter will enable me to um, either get multiple I squared C so that plug goes into would go into the I squared C or multiple CAN outputs. Right now I have one CAN, the airspeed sensor, and I have one I squared C, which is the Benawake TF Mini, I think it is, um, LiDAR for, um, for height measurement. In all of these ports here, so we've got two UARTs, OSD, USB, I squared C, CAN. Now I know what CAN is, I really love the concept of CAN. We've got uh, analog to digital converter or relay connections. I don't think I'll be using that. We have a GPS one connector and a GPS two connector. This can actually have two separate GPSs connected or alternatively, uh, those uh, that can be used as a, as, as a third UART and a fourth UART. And then there's a UART five here, which can also be an S bus out and this is where the safety buzzer connects, and this one is, oh, we talked about that already, that's the relay. That's not all. There is also on here, there's the SD card connector. There's a standard USB port, so I'll use that for initial calibration. And, uh, I, you know, I won't have to, like I have to on the Durandal, I have to put a USB extender thing sticking out of the plane that actually, um, to get the USB so that I could reach it. Uh, while well, it was buried deep inside the plane, but now I have a USB connector that's really nice. And here we have, uh, I don't know what that is, SWD it's labeled. We have uh, a second CAN port and we have an SPI interface. And then of course, on this end, we have even more goodies. So there's a, there's a power rail, or there's a servo rail here with eight servo outputs plus another, uh, how many is it? Um, well, it goes up, up to another five. So nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, a total of 14 uh, PWM uh, type outputs or could be used for um, motors with D-Shot. Uh, and then we have um, RC in, which I won't use because I'm gonna use a Express LRS, which will be connected into a UART, but you could connect a standard uh, RC in with 
uh, SBUS or IBUS, for example, which is what I used on the, uh, the, the PIX racer. It worked really well with the FSX6B receiver, so that could be done there too. And then we have uh, a special connector for servo power, so a, a separate servo power could be uh, used there, a battery input connector, and power two power ins. And so therefore it could actually run duplicate like backup. You can run you could run two of these power distribution boards with two batteries and two separate power ins. And I, I think um, that if one fails it'll use the other. I'm you know I'm guessing a little bit but uh, I think that actually will do that. So uh, there we have it. There's there's the flight controller and you know just before I finish because it is so small and nice I really have to see how much this weighs because it seems so small. Okay, let's see how much this Zealot flight controller weighs. 63 grams. That is very, very tiny. 63 grams. Not much at all. Now, 63 grams is about the same as a Pix Racer, actually. Um, I don't know if I can do this. There's too many. Yeah, I think I can. Okay, it's just kind of cheating, but um, hmm, that's interesting. The Pixel only weighs 45 grams, so although it's much larger, it's actually heavier. So this is about the same as a Pix Racer, slightly larger than a Pix Racer, and definitely smaller than a Durandal, or as some people seem to say, Durandal. I think I heard uh, Durand Durandal Durandal Durandal. Um, I, I've been saying Durandal, um, it could be Durand, Durandal, um, Zealot's easy, because so I, I kind of like that. That is the Choltec Zealot H743 flight controller, and if you, um, and I'll put the link to the website, I bought it directly from them, uh, and shipping was great, it got here in eight days flat. If you look at the pricing, you'll probably find it's quite attractive. You know, I don't want to comment, these videos stay online for a long time. I noticed that uh, the pricing changed on the Pix Racer from when I bought it and talked about it on the video to now. But still, for now, it's, um, it's, well, that's, that's the flight controller. Oh, and just to mention, this is, um, also got, uh, built, of course it's got a built-in uh, you know IMU so um, it's got a, a built-in gyro built-in barometer built-in compass uh, as well as the, the H743 the STM32 H743 flight controller all right I think I've run out of things to talk about so I will call it there thanks so much for watching I find this absolutely fascinating. I'm really looking forward to the project that this flight controller is going to power and uh, there'll be a new video coming soon about that. Some of you may have figured out what that's going to be and if not it won't be far away. So uh, you might want to subscribe. You might not but you might want to subscribe. If you do subscribe you'll see this. You'll also see uh, the second foot test of the the Fokker DR1 that you can see here coming soon uh, potentially the Sopwith Camel and also you know like I just posted this last weekend some um, you know, just interest fun fun FPV video um, from putting a, a camera on my on uh, my Aero Scout and flying it around and getting some pretty pictures so uh, you, there's no there's no end to the variety on Tim the Plain Man's plane time. Hopefully you like the video. If you do, it would be helpful if you click the little like button. So thanks very much everybody for watching. Tim the Plain Man, over and out.